So, uh, today I'm going to talk about not giving to get and, um, how two underpinnings of that. One is creativity. To trust our own creativity means we don't need to get, we create, right? And two, to have autonomy in our feelings so that we're not dependent on someone else. Um, where we feel like we need to get and we give to get. So first of all, we need to think about pre pleasure and reward. We can show up with God, our partner, our friendships, parents, um, job, uh, in a way that, you know, I mentioned pleasure and reward, but also pain and punishment. So either in a way that's pleasure and reward or in a way that's pain and punishment. And parents here, I gave, I said at the end, but really it's the root. The root of whether we had to give in order to get. So our parents, who were the givers when we were babies, our inner world's rules about consequences, laws of nature, patterns, and connections are formed by our parents. Um, our imagination really forms as a baby to interpret reality and to project out into the unknown space. Remember I, I mentioned um, yesterday actually that there could be um, things that block us, blindness, deafness. Um, these are also senses that develop. So when we give in order to get, there's a, for the, um, for the feminine, that's a dark trait. The, the, uh, the feminine um, is a receiver. So she gives, gives by accepting and, uh, you know, receiving does not mean taking. So protection from the dark, ma dark masculine is not having sex unless the husband, which is related to a biological drive for reproduction. It can be used for other creative pursuits and nurturings, but it could be hijacked if we give sex in order to get love. Women, right? Having a man close up is when we're not giving to get because every time he gets what he wants, he's not gonna stick around to give. He wants to be the giver. If you're the giver, then he's not the giver. Also, not desiring, not feeling dissatisfaction, not chasing anything. And when I say desiring, I mean, um, I want to say not ungrounded desiring. Like, um, like being in the state of desire rather than desiring. And then it's something that um, once achieved, we feel satisfied and pleasure. Rather being in the desiring, the sort of, it's like a, like a never ending. That's what I meant. Like never ending. So like a chasing of anything, not being a victim, not, you know, and, and also like, um, when we're not feeding dissatisfaction, in other words, we don't keep, uh, thinking satisfaction, um, you know, you know, not, um, not doing the whole, I'll be uh, satisfied when. So allowing people to really make their own interpretations instead of giving them who we are, letting so that we could get their, you know, who, who we want them to think we are, so we could get their approval. We actually, we stop wanting what we can't have. If it's not their approval, it's not their approval. Or wanting another to want what they can't have. Like, let's say we want to feel powerful, so we want to plague someone's desire to be, not plague, like uh, uh, sort of torment someone to have their desire be for us, but we're never going to give in. But then we feel desired. So we're giving 
a carrot at the end of the stick in order to get feeling desired, right? Bonding is, a, is precious and not to be taken for granted. I'm saying this even by me, because when we trust the patterns of life, we know that the patterns of life can bring me back, bring you, bring a person back to their center point to bond with the self in any situation from a core point of light. I like to think of this as the original stem cell, the, the unified source of the soul. So all bonding, all bonding can bring us back to one. So when we give in order to get, we're not giving ourselves and they're not really, we're not really getting what we need. We can give it to ourselves, directly bond with ourselves, and then we could directly bond with others. And we can be to God, um, like the bonder. We could be God who knows our thoughts. God knows our will and our thoughts. Really think about that. Is it really worth giving to get? So if we're, in order not to taint the, like, with people who are not bonding from the core self, core point, it's the false self, which can never be fulfilled. And in this way, we, it's like, in order to not taint it with people who are bonding from somewhere not the, the core point, like, we don't want to bond from a place that's not our center. We want to bond with that self, that real self, that original self, which only gives what it's supposed to and only gets what it's supposed to, right? Because it's like, it doesn't want to go outside of itself in order to exist. You know, it already exists. Um, and I want to share a little bit now about the two other points I made, creativity. Um, so, Kathy Malchiotti, is, uh, she has this book called Art Therapy Source Book. She says there's four aspects here. We have quality, which is spontaneity, play, the quality of creativity, spontaneity, playfulness, imagination, motivation, originality, self-expression, inventiveness, divergent thinking, and intuition. Then personality, independent, emotionally sensitive. This is the personality of creativity. Independent, emotionally sensitive, assertive, autonomous, self-sufficient, and self-accepting, particularly of the irrational parts of themselves. Um, resourceful, adventurous, and risk-taking. Practice. The practice of creativity is pushing limits, inventing, um, rejecting accepted assumptions, and breaking down boundaries. And the definition of creativity is the human potential, the capacity for self-actualization. In other words, becoming creator-like. And when we're in this mode, when we're practicing creativity, when we are defined, a self-identity is to define ourselves. Um, when we are In other words, we don't have to be a, soul, a false self. We're either being or becoming, but there's, when we're defining ourselves, practicing, and our personality and our, the quality of creativity in us, there's a chance to be more autonomous because the creator self, the uh, creative, you know, adaptive, resourceful self, is reliable and um, versus any past patterns where we need to 
you know, we need authority to permit us to feel or express or, or, or then instead we repress, you know, this codependency, we start to have feeling autonomy, feeling this feelings autonomy when we can tolerate our real self and, and, and real life instead of just blaming others or, you know, needing to have someone just in case to blame. Um, substituting, which is objectifying or scapegoating, making not making it an it or scapegoating it by finding a reason why it's, you know, it's uh, if it wasn't like that, you wouldn't be like this. And you wouldn't feel like this. Feelings become the enemy instead of a gift from Hashem. And so when we see and support our feelings, um, we can also see and support feelings about feelings. And when we seek to understand and validate our own feelings and accept them so that we don't cultivate a negative eye or a judgment to wish harm on those who don't understand, accept, or validate, we are um, it isn't even called independent. We're not in dependency. We're not in that whole field of dependency. We are autonomous. Not to say we're not relying on Hashem to give us the feelings and if they're difficult tools for them. But it's who we are. It's who we are versus trying to not be who we are. Um, and now I wish us all an amazing Shavuos, connecting with our creativity, our autonomy, in order to stop giving to get. All right, bye. Happy Shavuos. If I don't speak to you, have also a good Shabbos. And may we receive the Torah in happiness and in wholeness and with peace and love and oneness and with, with laughter and joy and hope and miracles and strength. Bye for now.